Welcome back. This is part three of the integration by substitution series. So part three involves definite integrals. If you haven't seen part one or two, I recommend you watch those first. So click on the tab or look in the description. They involve indefinite. Um, so this one is a little bit more complex because we have limits on our integral. So that um, involves a little bit more work to do. But we can go through these two examples. Take a picture, have a go at them if you want to do them first, and then you can check your answer. Let's dive in. Alrighty then. Okay, so here's part A. Uh, we have an integral here. We're going to need to use substitution. I can see straight away that I'll need to call the denominator u. Check out the other video so you can see why I can see that straight away. But this is u equals x squared minus 1. So therefore, du by dx is going to be just 2x. I'm going to move the dx up to the other side. So du equals 2x dx. Now I have almost exactly what is on the numerator. So if you just go up and we have a look at this, we have um, x dx, right? So imagine that sort of being in a line. So we've got x dx in a line here. Uh, that is almost what we have here. So, But we've got 2x dx. Now we don't want 2x dx, so we're going to divide both sides by 2. Um, all times both sides by a half. So we have half du is equal to x dx. Now I have exactly what is on the numerator here. So what I'll do is I'll just do my working out up here actually. Now I'm going to have the integral and I'll just leave the limits off for a moment. Okay, we're going to replace the x dx with half du. So we're going to put the half on the outside. Our operation du will always go at the end. So and therefore then this will be one over u. So that's what we did in parts one and two of this series. But now we have these limits to deal with. So that's, uh, let's just look at that. We have three and two. Now those are limits if we are dealing with x, but because we've made the substitution of u, we need to also change the limits. So what I'll do is I'll just bring both those limits down and let's just focus on this little bubble here of what I called u. So therefore then, if we substitute 2 in, we'll have u equals 2 squared, which is 4, 4 minus 1, which is 3. So that new limit, this will turn, we'll cross that out, and we'll just put 3. And now we also need to do the same for the upper limit. So let's just see what we get. calculate. So we'll get uh, u is equal to 3 squared, which is 9, 9 minus 1, which is 8. So the upper limit now is 8. And that is important because we're dealing with u, so we needed to change those limits. So we're going to go from 3 to 8. Right. Okay, so let's just uh, work to the side now. When we integrate 1 over u, we will get natural log of u. And we also have the half that was not affected. But we have our limits, and they are from eight. Sorry, 3 to 8. So we've got to go ahead and substitute those in now. So we've got half... Uh, let's do this now. So we've got natural log of 8. So we're going to substitute the upper limit in first. Subtract natural log of 3, because then we subtract then uh, the value with the lower limit substituted in. Now we're using our laws of logs here that log a minus log b is log a over b. So therefore we've got log 8 over 3 if we want to combine those. And that is it. That is the answer to part a. Okay, so part B is one that involves trig functions. Same thing here, we have an integral with limits. Now, don't be put off by those uh, radians. I can just help you out here. If you're not doing radians in your course, then pi over 2 is simply 90, and pi over 6 is 30 degrees, right? So we can just you can just use 30 degrees and 90 degrees if you prefer, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to have to find out what u is. Well, the u, if you watch part one and two of the video again, you'll realize that u will be what's underneath this square root here. So u is sine x. Therefore, du dx, okay, differential of sine becomes co cosine. And then we're going to bring the dx up to the other side, resulting in cosine x dx. Now, this is looking very good because this thing here is exactly the same as this thing here. And that is exactly what you want because now we want to switch out that with du. So I will start to write this again in terms of u, but we'll just leave the limits just for a moment, right? So we've got the integral of root u 
du, right? Because remember the cos dx has now been switched out with du, the operator du. And uh, when we're integrating root, uh, better to turn that into an index form. So that will be u to the half du. Now let's talk about these limits, right? So when we substituted, uh, sorry, in the original question was pi over six and uh, pi over two. So we need to change those. So what we're going to do is we're going to have to substitute those into this value of u. So I'll just copy that down and let's put them here. Okay, so we need to plug in pi over six, so that's 30 degrees. Now, what I've done here is I've just put in uh, my exact values grid. So again, you can click the tab above. I've shown, uh, did a video on how you can remember all these values if you need to in the exam. So we need to figure out what, if we substitute sine of 30 is, right? So we got sine of 30 is a half, right? So if we substitute pi over six in, okay, sine, pi over six was actually equal to a half, right? So that lower limit there now has changed to a half. So we're gonna scrap that out and I'll just write a half. Now let's do the same for the upper limit. So we've got pi over two and we need to substitute pi over two into sine x. So now uh, let's just think about this. We've got sine of pi over two. Now sine of pi over two, again, if you're not sure what that is, you can just use the exact values grid. So sine of pi over two is sine of 90. So we have sine of 90 is one, right? So you will need to remember that if you're doing the IB course, because that is not provided for you. So our lower limit is a half and our upper limit is one, right? So that's interesting. So we've got half and one, and now we're going to go ahead and integrate this with respect to u. So when we do that, we add one to the power and divide by the new power. So we're going to get three over two, because you can add two over two, and it gives three over two. Divided by three over two is the same as times in through by two over three. Um, and then also we have our limits that we have to substitute in, in here, which are going to be upper limit is one and then a half. Now it's a numerical exercise now just to get this all correct. So when we substitute one into this, we're gonna get two thirds times one to the power of three over two. Now anything to the power, sorry, one to the power of anything is still just one. So I know that's just going to just come out to be two thirds, but we also have to subtract. Now I need to plug half into this. So what we're going to do is let's just put two thirds down and now we need to plug a half into this. So this will be one half, open brackets, close brackets, to the power three over two. So there's just a little bit of a number exercise here to do, is how do we figure out what this is in yellow? So I can, what I can do is I'll just move up to the top here. I can write this slightly differently as half cubed and then square rooted, right? So those two multiplied together still yield three over two. Okay, so in doing that, that would result in one over eight and then square rooted, like to the power of a half. Uh, if you do that, then you square root the numerator, which is just one, but then also you square root eight. And if you remember your laws of radicals is that root eight is the same as root four root two. So that's two root two. So all of that in this box that I'm just putting sort of a star next to, it just comes out to be one over two root two. So if you do that, then multiplying it by the two over three uh, would result in, well, the twos would cancel resulting in one over three root two. So all of that was just a numerical sort of uh, challenge there just to get to that. So we have two over three minus one over three root two. And that is the end of that question. Let me know how you get on in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. See you next time.